Hello and welcome to this session. I'm here today to talk to you about the implications of coronavirus for the UK media and entertainment industry. Not exactly the most enjoyable and uplifting of topics to discuss. As we all know, COVID-19 has had a profound impact on all our lives and it will be a very long time before things are back to normal or the new norm, however that might be defined. So what has been the impact on television and wider video viewing? Firstly, the basic human need to understand the enormity of the virus and the devastation it could cause abroad and then also in the UK has led to greater engagement with all media, not just television, since the beginning of this year. Here you can see that the year-on-year -year decline in TV viewing that we are all very aware of actually lessened at the start of this year amongst each of these age groups, although viewing was unfortunately still down compared to the same time last year. <coughs> However, since the week commencing the 16th of March, when the government first advised people against non-essential travel and following that imposed the lockdown, we have seen a huge increase in television viewing among every age group, above 20% for all except the over 65s, who already watch a very creditable five hours per day. And we can see that the main beneficiary of this to date has been the BBC. It has arguably the central role in relaying and unpicking events for the population. As such, the BBC's front-footed approach to the pandemic has been both necessary and admirable. This chart shows the percentage uplift in audience by each clock hour. Peak audiences for the News at Six, the bulletin that follows the government's daily briefing, have exceeded 9 million, and that's before factoring in additional BBC News Channel and iPlayer viewing say of another two million per day. While not performing as well as the BBC, commercial viewing is still up about 15%. Now, as people settle into their new routines and viewing turns to genres away from the news and other COVID related programming, we would expect commercial viewing to pick up quite considerably. However, one area that has been hard hit is of course viewing to sports channels through the complete absence of any live action for the last month or so. Sky itself has reacted by allowing its customers to freeze payments for its sports channels, thereby helping to prevent churn. Now, in the last recession, pay TV benefited as households took up Sky subscriptions, watching the Premier League and its movie channels being a relatively cheap form of family entertainment. It no longer has that advantage. The broadcasters that rely upon advertising while it's obviously good that viewing is increasing, the commensurate rise in commercial impacts, coupled with a drop in advertiser demands, has led to declining CPTs. But what is absolutely unprecedented, though, is the sheer level of that collapse in advertiser demand, with campaigns deferred, cancelled, or not being approved in the first place. What started off purely in the sort of the travel industry has spread across every other industry as well. Now, in previous economic recessions over the past 35 years, plus the dot-com bubble in 2000, 2001, you can see that the negative impact on TV advertising expenditure has been relatively short, with the market bouncing back immediately afterwards. In real terms, as you can see on this chart, the year-on-year -year decline for the worst quarters has never been more than 20%. However, we are in exceptional times and in Q2 this year, the market will be down significantly more than that. Given that health experts cannot predict how long the UK will remain in lockdown, we cannot say when it might bounce back and how quickly. However, the market could be down between 30 and 50% this year if things don't improve. Now, while COVID-19 has led to an increase in engagement with TV programming, broadcasters aren't alone in feeling these somewhat positive effects. SWOD services, whether Netflix, Amazon Prime or BritBox have all benefited, while the launch of Disney Plus neatly coincided with lockdown. Netflix have just announced its latest results and, uh, and total global subscriptions are up by 16 million. And that only just got the, st the start of the COVID um, experience. Now this chart shows here in blue, TV viewing by week with the darker being 2020, the lighter being 2019 while the pink lines show unmatched use of the TV set by week, with 2020 again being the darker colour. This unmatched TV set usage could be to an SVOD service, could be to broadcasters on demand box sets or their other archive content, could be to YouTube, and of course it could be to gaming on TVs. 
Now, all these have increased significantly over the past few weeks. Across the entire population, it's an average of 30 minutes per person per day. Breaking this down further and looking at the increased usage of games consoles, we can see that this accounts for roughly one quarter of the total increase in, un in unmatched usage, disproportionately high. Growth is among kids and younger adults, especially males. Now, while some of this would be to watch, say, Netflix, a huge proportion would be gaming. Hardly surprising, given that this is about the only way for those at schools, colleges, universities or working to socialise at a safe distance. Though, as I always tell the team, beware the sample of one teenage boy in your own house. Um, I'd just like to note here that YouTube has also been hit by falling advertiser demand and thus price deflation since the crisis began. But there is a big difference between services such as Netflix or YouTube compared with that offered by UK broadcasters. These broadcasters are hugely valuable to the UK, not just in terms of delivering news and information at this point in time, but also providing programming genres that Netflix or YouTube never will. Their programming also reflects and celebrates UK culture, including the different regions and myriad of different cultures within the country itself, with programming aligned to our slightly unique tastes. It is therefore very ironic that suddenly there is a compelling case for viewers to watch more television and grow their appreciation for what it can offer. But at the same time, broadcasters are understandably seeking to reduce programming budgets, while TV production has, out of necessity, all but stopped. So in a few weeks' time, the schedule will be almost unrecognisable. And this programming is created in the UK, with the PSBs being the bedrock of our vibrant creative sector. Independent producers under the terms of trade are able to profit from the exploitation of IP of shows commissioned by the PSBs, one of the main reasons for the UK's international success. In stark contrast, Netflix, which spent £275 million on British-made TV programmes and films in 2018, and stated that it spent £400 million last year. However, it is Netflix and not the production company that retains all the future rights and Netflix can easily walk away from UK production. Now, even when a show is made in the UK, it's tailored to global tastes, definitely not for one locality or culture within our country. The inconsistency of commissions in the independent production sector has made the use of freelancers and their flexibility and availability at short notice a necessity across all facets of the production. As they're on short-term contracts, often weeks, sometimes days or sometimes months, when there is no production taking place, they don't get paid. Our broadcasters have been very supportive, with the BBC, which is obviously less affected by the pandemic, having given half a million pound, half a billion pounds towards a film and TV relief fund to provide stopgap support for workers, many of whom don't qualify for any government support. Broadcasters and companies everywhere are trying to mitigate the impact of COVID-19, with broadcasters' programming budgets out of necessity being cut. Of all the major broadcasters, Channel 4 is the most exposed to a downturn in advertising, which, as you can see here, accounts for over 80% of its revenues. Being a not-for-profit broadcaster, every pound is reinvested back into the business. This means it has very little headroom in any prolonged advertising downturn. This chart here is purely illustrative of the broadcaster's ability to fund their existing cost base in the context of slumping advertising expenditure. Nevertheless, it shows how Channel 4 has to shrink its cost base and fast, although it does have the benefit of a credit facility cash in hand that it can draw down from. And so to close, the immediate impact of COVID-19 has been to demonstrate the enduring strengths of television to inform, educate and entertain with increased engagement across the board. However, the economic impact will be very severe with the biggest TV advertising downturn ever little chance of a swift rebound. The transition to on-demand viewing will pick up and thus broadcast VOD and programmatic trading will accelerate. Some companies such as Channel 4 will be disproportionately affected and there will be a knock-on effect on the wider UK production sector threatening the long-term health of the UK broadcasting ecosystem. The sector needs support in the form of government commitments, whether that's in the form of commitments to spend on advertising, 
perhaps a temporary reduction in some of Channel 4's programming quotas, enabling it to rely on safer concepts to deliver its eyeballs. And finally, of course, commitment to ensure freelancers and employees continue to be adequately recompensed throughout this period. I will be available for uh, any questions after this um, on, on Twitter. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>